All right, guys, Tone here, and today it is time to play some Unexplored 2. And as the update uh, pop up here shows, it is version 1.0, the full release, which is very, very exciting. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this. Um, it should be available on other platforms. I just heard this week that it's also going to be on Xbox here on uh, early June. Um, so very, very exciting. Um, for people who don't know Unexplored 2, uh, it's a, obviously the sequel to Unexplored 1. Um, I first discovered it a year ago. Well, I knew about it before then, but I was always a fan of Unexplored 1. And then I was on an Unexplored 1 kick uh, last year following um, a bunch of Brogue I was doing and just made felt right because Unexplored 1 has a lot of influence from the, the traditional rogue like Brogue. And then while I was playing that, I saw that this game just came out onto Early Access. So I started playing it and it immediately became a community favorite on the stream. Um, I was enjoying it a lot. We played it for like a month or two <laughs> on stream. It was... Uh, a lot of fun and uh, I've been playing it on and off since then in early access and following the development and it's been really cool to see their development process which I think was probably one of the best examples I've seen of early access done right um, and it's just been really cool to to finally see it reach 1.0 right down here in the corner version 1.0 full release very very exciting so uh, before we get into the gameplay and start a new run here. Um, unexplored one, just for people, I'm gonna pretend people may have no idea what this is. Unexplored one released, gee, I don't know, 2017 or so. Um, it's a one of the non-traditional roguelikes uh, that really nails that dungeon diving traditional roguelike feel, but it's real time with free pause. Uh, it has an inventory system. Uh, the combat was a little clunky, um, but like the exploration and the item identification and dungeon diving was like, felt very, very good. It's a really fun game. Uh, we did some of that in the past couple of months on my streams and there should be a, at least one YouTube video up that was a, a, a VOD from a stream um, earlier this year. So now Unexplored 2 comes along and they've reinvented and reimagined it quite a bit. Uh, you're gonna notice a lot of similarities from the first game and like lore and story and such, but the gameplay... So Unexplored 1 was a dungeon diving adventure and uh, it's it was very lauded for its a complex dungeon generation algorithm and puzzles that span multiple dungeon floors and stuff like that. Uh, Unexplored 2 doesn't have, at least in the versions I've played, I haven't seen yet, like a deep dungeon. Instead, it's a whole world sprawled out and you explore like an entire continent with entire regions that have different like biomes and environmental hazards and like climates even. Um, Speaking of climate, it has its seasons. Um, as you explore, uh, it goes from winter to summer, so you have to deal with snow in certain areas. It's really, really cool. Uh, there's a, a lot of like a, a narrative focus on Unexplored 2. Uh, the story that you create is like very cool and essential to it, I think. And it really nails the feeling of ex like an arduous like exploration, like a trek, a journey across um, you know, like sprawling lands and such. Uh, you really have to prep for those journeys as far as like having the right um, like traveling gear and stuff, which is something I haven't seen in any other games I've played. I, I know it probably exists out there, but just in like the genres that I spend my most time with. And I, like, I've always been impressed with how they've like nailed that vibe. So that's what's going on with Unexplored 2 here. So, very excited to check it out, and let's get right into it. Uh, by the way, you guys probably haven't heard me say this enough. Um, I do have a new 
Patreon. It's the best way to support me and make my work here more sustainable, support this channel and the other things that I do. That's at patreon.com slash tonehack. And this series of gameplay on Unexplored 2 is brought to you by the supporters from that Patreon who have voted for us to play this for the YouTube. Um, so that's one of the perks that people have on there is voting for, you know, new projects and uh, video series and stuff like that. And this is what they ended up with. So you can thank all the Patreons for this video right now as well. All right. Um, I think my options are probably where I want them to be. Yeah, it's saved like my audio and stuff. So I think we're good here. Actually, I think this needs to turn down a little bit. Sorry if that... Uh, has been loud through this intro. I might have been cranking, <laughs> cranking the beats here uh, for my my offline play. Um, I actually want to abandon all of these early access worlds. You're starting fresh. All right, let's do it. Select our difficulty. Adventure. Combat is sparse and easier. Pick this mode if you're mostly interested in exploring. And by the way, that is a completely valid way to play this game. I think a lot of players will appreciate a lot of different parts of this game. And sometimes like the combat might feel like it gets in the way of the parts of the game that you love. Because um, the combat is just like one aspect of the game and it's not like the primary focus. I don't think any singular aspect of the game is like a primary focus. Um, so standard here says the game as it is intended to be played. Wayfarer, the game as intended by the designers when they thought they were still making a roguelite action game. Hard and somewhat unforgiving. Elder, for veterans and fans of difficult games. You can still make the game more difficult, but not by much. Uh, or you can play your, your last played game. Um, I think we should play Standard or Wayfarer here. Um, sure, let's go with Wayfarer. And now we can adjust our own difficulty here with a lot of different options here. You can set easier worlds, extra health. And I, I think, whoop back, if I hit Standard, yeah, so these options are just kind of like presets based on this so wayfair is no presets uh, and you can see like there's like extra health to start um, hazards can't kill you they only reduce you to one health you can go up high risk traveling increasing chance you get encounters while traveling high risk camping uh, little hope the wayfair starts with fewer hope points hope is an essential resource in this game as important as your life so there's a bunch of uh, options here to make things easier harder at the start of the run and throughout um, I'm actually going to turn on one of these easy options. I think it was low risk traveling that I liked or I wanted to try. Reduce the chance that you get encounters while traveling. And the only reason I'm doing this is because encounters while traveling um, I find that they sometimes break the pacing for me a bit if I'm traveling a long distance and just trying to get from point A and to point B for uh, progression or plot reasons, uh, for quest reasons, and not trying to like explore every point in between. I feel like the encounters add like a little bit more resistance to that, um, which I I just want to skip for the this playthrough and maybe future playthroughs if I like it better this way. Um, another thing about that's interesting about this is that even though it's an an easier option, a lot of these encounters give you opportunities to collect food and fruit, um, which actually can make the game easier in some ways too. Uh, they might make the game easier early on and harder later when the things that you encounter um, can be more dangerous is probably where that falls. Um, I'm going to turn that on. There's an argument for low risk ca camping for the similar reasons. If you just don't want as many interruptions, I'm gonna leave that on because that is part of the game's difficulty, a pretty big part, I think. 
We could like add a sigil to the vault. That actually sounds like a fun option. I'm gonna leave it off for now. So we can get like a more um, base version of this game. But like some of these, I feel like I would just turn on like every game, like legacy item and like sigil. Like these just sound like fun starting options to me. Heck, I am gonna turn those on, screw it. This will kind of like steer our character direction and stuff. I think those could be a lot of fun. And if for some reason I feel like it makes the game too easy, we don't even have to use them. Let's, let's go ahead and turn those on. That sounds fun. All right, I'm gonna leave everything else uh, basic here. Uh, content options, start with the prologue. Should we do that? I don't know, does the game always start there? Like the first time you boot it up? Hmm. Now nah, we'll just do the regular start here. Yeah, I think the, the prologue is a bit of like a, it's not a tutorial, but it's like a tutorialized area, if that makes sense. And we're probably gonna go there at some point on our, our journey anyways. Okay, there's some environmental stuff here. I'm not gonna touch that. We're gonna stick with a random seed. Let's start a new character. Uh, by the way, I'm going to act like um, people watching have not really seen this game before. So I'm going to take my time with like the character creation and the starting area. Um, and then, so I don't know how long that's going to take, but I'm not going to like try and skip past it or blow past it like I might on a normal game um, after like not my first game. I want everyone to see what the whole start of this game looks like. And then after that, like we get really get into the thick of the game and the exploration and everything, which is all good fun. All right, let's see, choose a culture. So we have some locked options here. And by the way, you see unlocks in here and you might wonder like, oh, is this one of those games where I unlock things and then they're available for the next time I play? Not quite. The way this game works is you're playing the world and the world, like the, the quest is a generational quest in the world that you generate and it's meant to be played by multiple characters um, because it's like such a monumental task that one character is not supposed to be able to complete it so these unlocks are between generations um, once you lose the world you start over from all these unlocks so there's no meta progression in the sense that you're going to get better um, in between save files and there are ways where even if you lose a character, your whole save file gets deleted as well. Um, if you lose in certain ways and you have to start over. But the game is meant for you to like play through a few different characters. And we'll see how that goes um, as we go on. But I just want to point out how these unlocks work here. All right, so we get to choose a culture. We have the Rafi. The Rafi are loyal followers of Raf and avid collectors of lost knowledge. Every generation, a wayfarer is appointed to act on their behalf. So we can pick three races, the human, the Gruz, the Tlingo Klong, and the background available is the Disciple. So we have the, the Rafi, our only option. So we can be t pick the human. Smooth-skinned humans are one of the oddest looking beings in the realm. I always thought that was funny. Um, they have different trope or <laughs> trope hates, no, hope traits, uh, which we'll get to as part of the character selection here. There's the Tlingo Klong. These always kind of look like frog people to me. They have strong connection with the spirits, which they love to translate into complex, tinkling melodies. Uh, they get strength, which is a cool trait. So they have their own traits. Then we have the Grooves. The graceful Grooves are tall, which offers them an unexpected insight into other beings. Their stalked eyes certainly help. This is a, a weird dude that has like an eye stalk. I shouldn't call them weird. There's nothing weird about your eye stalk. Um, I'm gonna pick the Groove. I, I always like starting with the Grooves. Um, Mostly because I like this fortune trait a lot, and we'll see uh, how that is when we get to that part. So now we get to choose a background. Background determines possible skills and equipment. The only option for now is the disciple, trained by the Rafi to handle any situation in the pursuit of saving the world. So we get four skills. There's a, some fixed skills. We get the possible skills to pick, and we get to pick possible equipment based on our background here. Hope traits. Hope traits might be lost during adventure, starting with the highest hope trait. 
Um, so the way the game works is you have a resource called hope and you lose hope by um, having misfortunes and hazards while traveling and other like bad things that happen to you. And hope is very difficult to recover. It's like a secondary health bar that you can't really replenish. Um, there are ways to replenish, but it's quite rare. So it's kind of like a hard clock uh, on like almost everything you do. And you have four tiers and each tier has uh, a hope trait associated with it. And you lose those traits as you lose enough hope to lose that tier. And the bottom tier is always vitality here, which is your ability to regenerate health by eating. So once you lose the lose your all your hope, um, in a way, like to me, that's always been like you've lost your your will to eat, and the game becomes very hard when you can't regenerate health like that. Um, so that's how hope is working here. So we get to pick a hope trait. Um, so fortune here is use only four sparks to redraw a fortune during a fortune test. That's actually the one that I like. It might be one of the best traits in the game, in my opinion. Um, you guys don't know, might not know what sparks or fortune tests are yet, but we will get to that. Let's see, we have uh, heightened senses, easier to spot hidden things, a natural charm, plus one redraw on social fortune tests, uh, run faster for quickness, plus one redraw on lower fortune tests, and then vitality at the bottom there. So I get to pick two more of these. Run faster sounds really nice. I'm going to go with these two fortune tests one, social and lore, because um, fortune tests I find are pretty important and the redraws help a lot. And again, that might not mean much to you guys yet, uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, fortune tests are basically the game's way of um, representing things that don't work well in like a real time environment, like combat, like you don't need the fortune test for. It's things that like you'd roll like a dice for in D and D for like diplomacy or something. Uh, they handle with like fortune tests here. So that's why there are social fortune tests, lore fortune tests, it's like deciphering like like your knowledge and lore. Um, it's those kinds of things. We get to choose some skills here. We start with single handed martial art, uh, which is plus one damage with single handed weapons. Uh, we can take archery, plus one damage with bows. Barter, better deals when trading goods. Empathy, plus one redraw on social fortune test. Formal education, plus one redraw on knowledge fortune test. So you can see these fortune tests are a pretty critical part of this game. Uh, pathfinding, ignore one loss on a journey. Shield protection, less cooldown, more block, or block more, heavier weapon attacks, and rapidly block two attacks with any shield. So shield perks, silent steps, ability to move more silently and stay unseen. When traveling, ignore visible hardships once per journey. Um, and throwing technique, plus one damage with throwing weapons. I'm gonna take pathfinding here, because um, I already mentioned fortune tests are important. Um, being able to journey is important, so ignoring a loss is pretty good there. Uh, and combat is also pretty important. We start with this plus one damage with single-handed weapons. I think shield proficiency might be a natural pair if we're uh, going with single-handed weapons there. So maybe that's a good thing to take. And we can pick one more. I'm going to do one more social fortune test. I feel like we're probably going to maybe like do a lot of that. Although barter sounds pretty cool too. Better deals when trading goods is always nice. Hmm. I also like the redraw on knowledge fortune test. We can't really pick wrong here. I'm gonna go with empathy for now, so we can just be like really good at these social tests. All right, now we get to choose our equipment. And our available options here on the left is I could, it looks like I can swap out my mace with a ax or a sword. I've always kind of liked the swords ever since I had this, like, one of the unlockable classes is a sword master, and I had a lot of fun with that. Um, I've never really played much with the mace. The mace has extra bulk here. You can see at the bottom, bulk one plus two inventory slots. Um, so this is our inventory, this three by six grid, so 18 slots. These bulk slots are from items that take up more than one slot. They're represented by bulk. So this is adding two inventory slots of bulk. So this is actually a three slot weapon. If I take that off, I get three slots here. So one perk of the sword is it has less bulk. 
And I do find that my inventory gets quite cramped in this game. The axe is also plus one, plus two bulk slots. So I, I, I'm leaning towards the sword for that alone. Um, so this is a well-made sword, which means you can enhance it with sigils. It has two sigil slots. Its normal attack is seven damage. Its power attack is nine damage and it's forced back. Um, the mace does seven damage with force back on its normal attack. And then 10 damage and ignore soft armor, stunning and force back on its power attack, um, which is pretty sweet, uh, which you get all that for that one extra inventory slot. There's a strong argument for that here. On um, the axe, does six damage and force back and then nine damage force back and disable shield, which is pretty big. Um, I think the last long run I had, uh, we used a like like an artifact axe I found for quite a while. Um, that mace is really tempting. Screw it. Let's go with the mace. And I don't think I can take more of these. I think it will only let us take... Yeah, it automatically unequipped my mace. So I'm just going to take all this other stuff. We also start with a torch, a bedroll. Our bedroll has fuzzy covers. Uh, sounds very cozy. Negates a cold hardship when resting outside without a fire. Recharge when resting in comfort. Um, cold weather gear. Insulated. Negates the first effect. Cold effect suffered during a journey. Uh, Crusader shield. Cover. Uh, when actively used, blocks projectiles. I think blocking and cover there are always what you have with uh, your shields. We have a balance and notched dagger. So balance means it has a lower cooldown, which is good. And notched means it does minus one damage, but can be repaired. So there's like a bit of a weapon durability system here. Um, there are random traits that gear can have. So that's what you're seeing on a lot of these. Uh, we have a provision bag. Oh, that got renamed. That used to just be called a backpack, which I guess might have been confusing because the whole inventory looked like a backpack. Or like in most games, that's what you consider. But a provision bag, food and herbs keep twice as long. Um, that's awesome. That's a, That makes a lot more thematic sense, I think. And this is important because uh, food and herbs are a staple of like how you heal yourself. A repair kit, needles, threads, bits of leather, and some sticky gum. Everything an intrepid adventurer needs to patch up their gear in, gear in the field. So we can use that to repair items. We have practical rope, which is practical, gives you plus one use. So this is normally five uses, but we get six out of it. We have practical, bulky, sturdy boots. These negate fatigue suffered from traveling through lands and wilderness once per journey. Uh, we get four uses, uh, plus one from practical, but it has plus one bulk from being extra bulky. Uh, travel cloak, it's crude, so minus one use there. Uh, we have a west wind tent, it's makeshift, which is minus one use. Uh, and it gets the effects of rain while camping outside. So I'm okay with this setup. So this is our character. All right, we can do a, a random random name here. A doger. I like it. Are you ready to start your adventure? Yes, I am. Ah, uh, yes, this is like one of the most exciting parts of the game. The generation of the world map. We'll get back to that in a second. Staff of Yendor recovered. All right, we are in the game. So we will learn more about the Staff of Yendor soon. Let's see, we got some guards here. Merchant. Yendorik the Merchant. This person's breath steams in the cold air. Great wares, best prices. Get value for money right here, people. Get yours while it's hot. Stuff is moving fast. Oh, what do you have? Ancient Meringue Maps. Informative schematic offered to the librarian in Haven to gain a small amount of knowledge. 
a well-made ring, so we can put a sigil on this and make a magic ring. A passage. Join the trader on their journey to Yenem. The journey will take 18 days and will pass safely. Oh, that's so cool. That's brand new. Uh, a well-made light sword. Check this out. So well-made means you can put a sigil on it. So this sword only has one sigil slot, but it's minus one bulk. It's defensive, no cooldown, parrying heavy weapons. Ancient, increased chance of acquiring negative qualities from damage. So it's old. It's already wrecked. It has minus two damage to start, but repaired by Smith. So Ancient's pretty rough, but uh, minus one bulk and defensive, that stuff sounds really cool. I probably can't afford any of this. Um, but this, these kinds of traders are new, I believe, so it's pretty cool to see that. What was their other option here? Next destination? I doubt I'll stick around here much longer. Going to Yenem next. I guess I could make some room for you if you wish. We just have to settle on the right price. Cool. <laughs> the ca Yenem, um, the clan Wolfmane, clan capital, relation angry. Probably don't want to go there. All right. Let's look at the world map. So this whole map is generated every time you start a new game. All kinds of different areas. I just love seeing like all the different iterations every time I start a new game. So we start in a forest area. There's some plains here. There's some like mountains on the sides of us. Here's the first valley we need to get there. So these these uh, little chevron tick mark things is how difficult the area is. So there's one here, one there, two here, level two, level one, level two. So just to get an idea of like the difficulty area of these uh, places. You can click on these and uh, get some info on them. Yeah, challenge level one. The thick vegetation of the forest of Dwardadal is teeming with life. Whether the terrain takes the form of impregnable jungles or soothing sun dappled glades, keeping true to your bearings may be challenging. There's some common hardships here. Cold, wilderness, uh, lost, and hazard. So knowing like where you're going to be traveling and prepping for those hardships is a big part of this game. All right, let's explore the town a little bit. Have you seen a standing stone? I don't know who left all these old standing stones, but I have heard tell that the inscriptions may bear often they bear may often contain old secrets. Some are even magical. Oh, Regovetch. Excuse me, I have to be somewhere else with some urgency, they say. Okay, so here is our first fortune test. So like I said, this is used to represent things like you might um, roll a dice for in like a tabletop gaming situation. Um, you represent combat and stealth and like traveling through like just movement in this 3D world within the game. Um, things like conversation aren't well represented in uh, like this like game platform. So they've created a fortune test. And instead of just making it like rolling a dice, you're actually drawing chits from like a, a pool and they have different results. Uh, and it's a really clever system. When I first saw this, I was, uh, I wouldn't say skeptical, but I looked at it and said, man, this feels like something that a lot of players might not like is having like mini games in their games. But I have like grown to like this system a lot because there's a lot they can do with it. Um, just like change the probabilities of outcomes so with these rerolls, uh, like you can do different things. So uh, it's a really good and flexible, and like it could be made like to be a deep system as well. Something I enjoy. So here's our first fortune test, and I can see already that there's two failure chips in here, and then these other ones have different results. So we're doing a fortune test, and I get two free rerolls here for my empathy and natural charm that I took uh, at the character creation. 
I could leave, let them leave, but we have some kind of social test here, which usually means they're going to give us some like some useful information or something else. You mentioned that it'd be so informative if they'd share their experiences and you'd share yours. Makes sense, right? So there's a little bit of a like flavor text in here for each thing that you do. So we drew this chip, which is play it safe, adds three success icons to the pool. Smiling and nodding politely all the time, you show them non-committal agreement when talking to them. We drew this now. Push your luck, add one more success token to the pool. So you can now see I'm going to have four success tokens in the pool. Which makes it very likely for me to draw the success outcome. Ah, oh, what a friendly gesture on your part. You've piqued my curiosity. Oh, look at that. We got a bunch of stuff here. You seem reliable enough. I've hidden a map to my hidden inheritance in a dense woodland in <laughs> Corentin Wood. Go find it and use it well. Wow, we talked. <laughs> that was very successful. The guy just gave us his inheritance. In a mysterious tower. Oh, this is just the treasure map. The inheritance is going to be somewhere else. This is really cool. So we just got like a quest. It requires us to go find a treasure map from a cast from a tower and then go find the treasure. That is very cool. We only got that because we were good at um, talking to this guy and maneuvering our conversation. Baldovec the Smith. This person's breath steams in the cold air. What a great day, isn't it? Step into my store, such as it is, and let me help you out. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for today? Sugar root. You don't happen to have some sugar root, do you? I love that stuff, but my partner says I shouldn't eat too much of it. Bad for the teeth, you see. I wonder if that means that he values that sugar root more for trading. Um, so this guy can repair our items. Um, it can improve our mace to add excellent, plus one damage. That's cool. I don't know if I've seen that one before. And he has other stuff in here. 25% chance of plus three damage. That's cool. This has stunning and force back on it. It almost feels better than our mace, except our mace is well made, so we can put sigils in it. Oh, it does less damage. Small shield, light and defensive. I kind of want to get a small shield over a heavy shield, I think. Maybe? I don't know. I'm trying to free up inventory slots. Where my head's at with that. Alright, we're not going to mess with that yet. Have you seen a standing stone? Okay, that's that guy again. Hilda Wolf, the Serpent Guard. Ah, you have come to study the ancient machinery, haven't you? It's a marvel, truly. I've dedicated my life to its study. What you see here is what's known as a serpent gate. It's a method of transportation between distant locations. What? This gate here in Haven is the western gate, but elsewhere there's also an eastern gate, a southern gate, and a northern gate. Unfortunately, they seem to be out of business and have been for a while. They are powered by sky sigils, you see. Usually one should be lying around nearby, but this one is broke. The gate currently doesn't have one to power it. This lever here raises the container for the sigil, but as you can see for yourself, it is quite empty. Should you come across a sky sigil, I kindly ask that you bring it here. We could place it inside and see what those gates are like, eh? I'd dearly love to do it myself, but I'm not allowed to leave my post. So this is like a fast travel mechanic. And I guess we would put a sigil here. This device is designed as a receptacle for a sky sigil. Unfortunately, you do not have one. This game has its own, like, very cool, um, like, kind of technology to it. And it uses these sigils to power, like, ancient machinery. And the sigils are, like, mystical, magical things. Um, it's very cool. All right, we have a inscription on something here, which is asking us to do a lore fortune test. The ancient inscription adorns the wall. You're pretty sure that one glyph stands for forge. Uh, so let's see if we can decipher it. You concentrate as you trace the ancient markings. So right away we drew a failure outcome here, but I have one free reroll. 
from my wisdom ability. So I can use that, draw an extra fortune. Um, one free reroll left. It adds a, I think it's a partial success to the pool. And now we can reroll more, but now it starts costing fortune or uh, spark. We have 25 spark, uh, which is down here. So spark is a resource you can use for a fortune test. So I can play it safe, um, use this to add three successes to the pool. And we draw a failure again. Um, I want to use Spark to re-roll this. I think we just accept our failure. We have no idea what the inscription says. So that, if we were um, successful at that, um, like when we were talking to that, that other guy that told us about like the treasure map, that might have given us the location of some like cool treasure, or, like started us on a new quest as well. Good, good day, Wayfarer. Talk to the lore master. Regavald the lore master. The lore master bows at you. Their huge hat barely stays on their head. It's good to see you, Wayfarer. Now that you've taken the staff, you are ready to continue with the plan. All right, so this guy's gonna. The lore master is gonna give us a lore dump. The lore master looks pensively for a moment. Go to the abandoned temple Jet Beak and look for information on how to get in the valley. Jet Peak is one of our old places which we had to abandon. If you delve deep in the archives, you might find clues on how we can get in. The lore master removes a bit of lint from their huge hat while they patiently wait for your next question. Advice? Only fight if you have to. More advice. Look for sigils to empower well-made items on forges. Yeah, you don't get experience points, um, experience points from fighting enemies in this game. So that was good advice to only fight if you have to. Um, stealthing or like even running past enemies is just as valid as defeating them in combat. Let's see relics. The lore of the Rafi lies scattered and broken throughout the world. While exploring Rafi temples, you should stay on the lookout for relics. I'm sure these would have been kept secure behind lock and key. All right. Edgar, the first lore keeper. Hello, Wayfarer. I am the first lore keeper of Haven. It's my duty to advise you on possible tasks you could undertake. I have a couple of suggestions if you'd like to hear them. Copper ore. We believe copper ore can be found in a cave. We'd like you to go and confirm this for us. If you find copper there, you might want to share its location with another clan. They might want to mine it. That shows us where that cave is. What? Garden of Yendor. Have you heard of the Garden of Yendor? That's where we used to train our wayfarers, but recently it was attacked by the Empire. Most of their minions have left by now, but an arcane rift is still there. We cannot afford to let it be. You should go there and close it before it grows out of control. So two nodes away, and deeds are the experience in this game. So you can get deeds, major and minor, and those are how you level up, essentially. Other task. The first Lord Caper nods and grabs a hold of a Rop figurine. I have just enough energy to scry for you once. Please tell me, what do you seek? We can seek magic tools, we can seek knowledge, or we can fight the Empire. I want to seek magic tools. We have reason to believe a stash of serpent spheres have been mislocated in a large cave in the forest of Dordadal. These spheres allow you to enter or exit the serpent's path without using the gates. For that reason, they might prove an invaluable asset. Although I fear it will be unlikely you will be able to claim these artifacts without resistance. Who knows who or what is attracted to their presence? Sweet. That is up there. Cool. Let's see, wake elementals. The elementals are magical beings that assisted Roth in the creation of this world. There are five elementals in total, one for each type of magic. Seeking out and waking these elementals might assist you on your quest. 
It will make their magic stronger in the entire world. In addition, they will also grant you a boon. I don't think I've ever done this. I want to find an elemental this run if we can. But you need to know what to look for. I suggest you travel to the villages and talk to the storytellers there. Many of the stories they preserve relate to the elementals in one way or another. It would be a good place to start. Yep. Cool. Alright, there is a ton of like books and like reading that we can do here. I'm going to save that for our return trip to the town here. So I want to get into some of the exploration of this game here. Um, let's talk to this guy real quick. Um, I wish you a splendid day, my dear Wayfarer. Welcome to my humble abode, the Haven's Great Library. Ah, pardon me for being a bit rude. I am Gisagis, the current Prime Archivist in Haven. Let me help you today. Alright, we're not going to talk to them now. Let's, let's get out into the world. I think there's like a lot of like little lore dumps there. We can do that um, later when we return here after some exploration. I do think we should check out the vault. Just because there could be gear in here. And yeah, we can grab a healing brew. Uh, there's a layered garment. Traditional outfit made from several layers of tightly woven fabric. The tiny moon shaped talismans are sewn on the inside for good luck. It has a sigil slot, it's fur line, so it protects against cold ones. Um, projectiles do minus two damage. Bronze, the first flame sigil counts double. Um, it's soft armor, so it reduces one damage. I want to save that until we find a fire sigil. Let's see, we have a magic ring, well made. It has unidentified qualities, revealed by time and use. All right, I'm going to equip that and see if we can figure out what it is. We have a small shield here, well made and legendary. Um, so blocking and cover, that's what all shields have. It's well made, so it's one sigil slot. It's legendary, so it gives you one free draw to social test. Which that's a cool like perk on these items. Like people recognize the shield and it makes them like more like favorably dispositioned to you. It's spiked, so it has you a 25% chance to do five damage when blocking an attack. That's really cool. Um, it's durable. I like that. I don't want to take this in case we, like, we lose this character very quickly. Like, we need to get, like, some footing. Let's see if we can identify this ring and do some exploring. So that means I need to equip the ring. So we have the bulky items, which take up these 18 inventory slots. And then you have small items, which you can have as many as you can carry of. I'm going to equip that ring. Uh, we also started with another healing brew, so we have two healing potions. Um, I have a Roth carving, a trinket, tradable item of minor value, and whey bread. Um, preserved, it, you can eat when camping to restore 12 health, and it spoils after 30 days. This is the legacy chest. So those two settings I put at the beginning of the game, um, Gave me these two items right here. So this one is a well-made legacy axe. So legacy means it returns to Haven when the Wayfarer dies. So our next character can actually use this again if I choose to use it. Um, other than that, it's just a regular axe with one sigil slot. We have a sky sigil here, so we can actually activate that sky, um, that serpent gate right away if we wanted to. Which maybe we should do. I kind of wanted to put this in a weapon, but if I put that in the Serpent Gate, then if we find another one and activate it, then we can come back here. I'm going to leave it here for now. You know what? Let's let's do that, because we can always take this back. And we also have the Roth Guard. A unique blessed shield is only given to the most trusted of the Rafi. Um, I believe this is a perk for backers of the Kickstarter. So this has, on top of blocking and cover, guiding, protects against lost ones, um, bulk, one plus two inventory slots. It's legacy, so it returns here when we die. I may as well take that over the Crusader shield. There's a forge back here, but I want to move on. So 
so we have a shield that is equivalent or better than our other shields. So I'm going to try and uh, trade our current shield and take that. Let's go check this out. Place Sky Sigil. Very cool. So we can enter the spirit world. Hello again. I trust you have returned to this fully operational serpent gate in good health and spirit. Hmm. Didn't have much more to say about that. Um, I'm not going to use that yet, but we know it's available. And I can remove that sigil if I want. All right. Who else did we have over here? It's a standing stones guy. That guy gave us his treasure map. All right, we have the envoys for the all the clans of this continent. Ah, oh, Wayfair, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm the ambassador for Clan Sandriders. We bid you a fond welcome to visit our towns and pastures if you ever find yourself in the area. These are giving us their locations of their towns. Oi, watch where you're going. This is the envoy of Clan Wolfman you're talking to. And we don't like you and the Rafi much these days. Yeah, so that adds up with what the, the map said, that they were angry with us. And let's see. How nice to meet a wayfarer. Myself, I'm the envoy of Clan Jabbar. You're welcome to visit my clan lands if you're in the area. And this guy, good to meet you, Wayfarer. Well then, I'm the envoy of Clan Alzmida. If you're in the area and would like to visit our lands, you'd be welcome. Cool. So now... Yeah, we have all these clan locations. Cool. And since I skipped a lot of the lore, um, I'll just say that our main mission here is to take the Staff of Yendor to the Prime Elemental Forge in the first valley here and destroy it. It is a like Lord of the Rings um, type of adventure. Um, so much so that there's a presence stat down here that as you use the staff, sort of like in Lord of the Rings when they use the ring, um, the Empire like learns about your location and the game gets harder for you until you're able to reduce your presence stat. Which is very cool. Alright, I just want to talk to people in the inns because these usually give you us more stuff to explore and then we're gonna get on our way. My grandparent used to talk fondly of the Yenestain Desert and its lush forest. The desert and its forest, eh? But if you look at that region now, you'd be surprised if a single crop grew there. Oh, okay, now it's a desert. I wonder if the magic well of their stories also ran dry. Okay, so that's this area. Apparently there's a magic well, possibly. You know a Ford and Corentin would? It's one of the few places where you can cross the river. See, that is a useful thing to know about. Yeah, these rivers can be hard to cross in my experience. So this is telling us a location where we can cross between the two continents. That is very helpful. It's the innkeeper. Let's see, my grandparent used to talk fondly of the desert and its lush forest. Is this the same guy? They just have the same grandfather. <laughs> same grandparents, same story. You know how it is. All right. And yeah, Haven is like the starting Star town, Wars. the main town that's in every game. Let's see, we have a traitor. Albrecht's face lights up as they recognize you. What a great day, isn't it? Step into my store such as it is and let me help you out. Is there anything in particular you're looking for today? Okay, so you can see this red border means they don't care about my shield that much. A hooded lantern, when held, emits a strong reddish light. 
That's pretty nice. Wait, our boots were bulky, right? Yeah, can I trade these for non-bulky boots? These ones are fur-lined as well. Hmm. I'm not giving him enough. I could throw in the, the Roth carving, which is like a generous add, so it says it will make me well-liked. I can make them, so this is how the trading works. It's, it's like bartering. I can like try different things. So he's actually gonna throw in the lantern for free here. Oh, this takes an inventory slot. I don't want that. Uh, I'll, I'll stash it for now. Is there anything else we need? I think I have most of this stuff already. Our tent is makeshift. So is this one. Travel cloak is crude, so I could try and trade for a better travel cloak. This one has fur lined as well. So we lost that well liked status. I can get it again by giving them my way bread. I think we want to keep that though. I can give them the shield, but I can get better value for the shield elsewhere. They like the dagger. I don't know if I'm going to use the dagger. We might. I'm going to hold on to that. Kind of want to be well liked. Let's do this. I won't take the lantern for now. Can I get anything else though? Seems about that's all we can get. I can get the turnip. <laughs> we'll take the turnip for now. All right, so no lantern, but we'll, we'll be well liked. By that. So well liked, gain plus one on social fortune tests in this area. You know what? That's actually the last thing we needed. I thought it might um, have helped with bartering with people. It is probably the last thing we needed here. Um, so this is the healer. I'm not gonna grab anything from them at this time. Oops, wrong way. I wanted to go back to the vault to put some things away, and then we're going to explore. We're putting things away because if, well, first of all, it gets out of my inventory if I'm not going to use it. Um, what hardships are we dealing with? Cold, wilderness, and lost and hazards. So I will keep the cold weather here. The boots are for wilderness. I'm gonna ditch the... Oh! The cloak I just bought is also bulky. Extra bulky. That kind of sucks actually. Oh well. Let's go with that, and then I was going to grab the shield from here. I'm gonna put the torch away as well. All right.
Off we go. Oh, this map UI has been improved a bit since last time I played. Um, so where do we want to go? We can check out this cave. Opportunity to find natural resources. There's a way shrine on the way. Seems like a good goal. I think we ultimately want to work our way up here, which is quite a journey. Where are some of these towns? Is this another region? It is. It's a tiny plane. I wonder what's down there. Also a farm over here. Let's go here. Um, this looks like an exciting path to one of our quests. So we will start by going to this way shrine. Um, we have a lost hardship, but I took that pathfinding skill, which is going to prevent that. And then that skill is gone until I rest. All right, um, it says that there are folk at this area. So let's go ahead and explore it. Very cool. Lovely little, this game looks so good. <laughs> I just love the art style and how everything looks. And those establishing shots of the area are really cool. I think, okay, so I don't have anything equipped yet. I didn't want to do it in town because I don't know if they like. All right, so I have a preset here. I don't know if they like you like having weapons out in town. So I think I can hit this. Yeah, firewood, dry brush firewood. Dry brush is light, burns hot and slowly. This makes for excellent fires in remote, arid areas. Make fire anywhere. Use to create a fire even when no wood is to be found in the area. So there are certain environments where you're not able to make a fire in unless you have that in your inventory. So that sounds pretty useful to have. All right, let's go inside the way shrine. By the way, there are three zoom levels that I'm going to be like alternating between. Uh oh. You have some flaming skulls that came out of something. dungeon okay so there's a if you go into stealth mode it searches your surroundings and that's what you usually do with these wells we found a deer figurine that probably goes onto this pedestal what else is up here there's some torches I can light this thing I think I just summoned the flaming skulls. Incantation. The script is a magic incantation. You can read it to invoke the spell it represents, or you can try and identify the spell first. Let's see if we can see what the spell is. Okay, I think... So this is an interesting token. It adds a success but it triggers side effects and I think in this type of test the side effect is that it will cast the spell which you may not want but we're going to identify it um, <laughs> so the incantation will trigger a spell summon screaming skull I'm going to run 
fight more skulls. Oh, they are screaming. It's funny, I see where they got their name. You can see my weapon flashes. Uh, that's why it's on cooldown. Imagine if I... Oh. They have like an AoE death explosion that tends to kill the other guys. Okay, I had a feeling that would be the case. So there's like a flame dungeon right now. Flame symbol on the ground. This is a very unexplored one puzzle. Actually, this is the like unexplored one puzzle where if you light two torches, a chest sometimes uh, comes in between them. So what's in here? Sturdy boots, brand new and crude. Well, I could take these over my bulky ones if I want. But what is this? I'm curious about this, because this is a legacy item. I can tell by the yellow border. Dust Devil Wrap. A light cloak woven from skyweed thread in a lower in the lower right hand corner, an embroidered sky symbol glows with a faint magical light. Windbreaker negates one storm, blizzard, or sandstorm hardship on every journey. One inventory slot, um, legacy. That is really cool. I'm gonna take that. Um those are some, like, very bad hardships, if I remember correctly. So that sounds quite useful. And there's also a water skin here. Negates one fatigue uh, from heat once per journey. Can refill near a source of water. Brand new crude cold weather gear. I'll just grab the boots for now. I think because they're crude, I'd like to use them. Actually, wait. I don't have any boots equipped. I need to equip that. I'll go ahead and equip that. I don't have any armor yet. Okay, the cold weather gear goes in the same slot, so we gotta pay attention to what we're wearing. Or I'm guessing I just wanna put that. that deer figurine on the pedestal. Ooh, I can break these pots. I wonder if anything is inside of them. This is an old shrine dedicated to mercy, and their aspect is an elder of flame. Leaving a tribute of food here will attune you to that element. Sure. Poison immunity. Ignore the effects of poison. Last until time passes. Inscription. The inscription clearly indicates that the devices in this chamber power the magic hearth in this area. So this is like the the contraption from Haven that powered the Serpent Gate with a Sky Sigil. It looks like this one has a Flame Sigil. I kind of want to take that because we had that Flame Sigil armor in town. That could be sweet. So I might... Is it, is it stealing? I don't know. I want to borrow it. Maybe we'll put it back. I don't know if they're going to be angry with me. Okay, so this hearth is, uh... I think these do anything. Oh, 
Oh, I can take the torch. Alright, I don't think there's anything left there for us. So we are now plus one flame sigil. That regrew. <laughs> I didn't think I was down there that long, but I'll take some more firewood. Oh, this doesn't connect to the cave. We might have to go up to this trading post first. So we have um, a folk encounter and a wilderness uh, hardship. I equipped my sturdy boots, so the wilderness won't affect us this uh, this travel. And we have the encounter here. Uh, there's some turnips here that I can try and harvest. This is some kind of switch or enemy. I don't remember how those work. Check out the views. It's beautiful. I'm gonna put my weapons away. Wellithar blinks at you. Who are you? I don't like the looks of you. He's a ruffian. These guys look like they mean business. You scramble to find reasons why it's in their best interest not to harm you. And I get two rerolls here for my social skills. Gently but firmly, you remind them that you're worth more to them alive than dead. And I'll just take the success outcome. There was a greater success outcome in there too, uh, which is something you can shoot for, which like sometimes gives you like an additional reward. Like it looks like success here was just that they are not going to fight me, and greater success might be. I don't know that they give me something or like some like some uh, like a like a quest tip or something. So we got our normal success. He says, ah, okay, sure, sure, it's fine. Pass if you must. You're not worth staining our blades. I think investigating this would steal. It's like their bag that's on the ground. I'm not gonna touch that. There's something I can reach inside over here. Okay, so this is something I've seen before. This is like a little spirit. So something we have not shown off before is the Staff of Yendor. You can actually wield it. And if you wield it near a elemental source, you can tap into that element. So this guy is generating an elemental source and I can use this to cast a Piercing Root spell now. Piercing Roots. Um, it also gave us this trait. For now, forest friend, the sentient plants are friendly. They will not attack and occasionally open passageways. You can also see that there's a fire here we can tap into. So now we get flame burst. Uh, the game's a little confused because I'm overlapping two circles. All right, well, I'm not gonna mess with that. Just figured I'd show it off. All right, we use our boots to deny that wilderness. Um, I don't know how to get to the cave, but I guess we'll go to this trading post for now. It said enemies are here. Uh, that's horrifying. I don't know if I want to go in here. By the way, I don't like doing it. But you can hunt the animals for meat. So killing these adorable little birds uh, is technically optimal. I thought these might have been some kind of elemental thing. My staff doesn't do anything. We have guild hair here. We can try to harvest. We gain a guild air. Uh, use to remove poisoned. Cool. Oh, 
What was that? You spot something valuable glittering between those ancient remains. It's just there, yours for the taking. Loot remains. Mind's eye filter gained. Okay, I thought those bones were about to come to life. What is that? Wizened scholars make use of this potion to clear their foggy minds, granting a flash of remembrance from a youth spent in learning. Uh, clarity. Use this to gain plus two redraws on any lore or fortune or lore or magic fortune test. Sweet. I'm a little afraid of these guys. Huh, that wasn't too bad. I got a backstab on him. Because I was hiding. Okay, these guys are weaker than I thought they would be. That's good. These guys are terrifying, though. So I'm holding my shield up, baiting their attack, and then swinging in with my, my powerful club. I guess this used to be a trading post. You spot something valuable glittering between those ancient remains. It's just there, yours for the taking. Yeah, this is what I thought was going to happen before. Oh no. So we're taking some damage. So there was something in in there, but I didn't have room in my inventory for it. I wish it told me what it was. Let me try dropping something. I hope it doesn't resummon anything. Eclipses libation. Oh, that. Weird that it wouldn't let me pick that up even though, just because my inventory was full, even though it's a small item. Um, so this says, Shades wish to be seen as little as possible in order to carry out their mysterious tasks undisturbed. As such, the secret liquid is, sacred liquid is often carried by these emissaries of the dark side. Lunar refraction used to gain invisible. That's cool. I can pick this up again. Let's check the well. Nothing inside. Were there any more remains? Wait, is this a different remain? Hang on. My health is low, so I want to camp. That's cold. We're going to light a fire. If we rest without a fire or bedroll, we'd gain cold. I don't want that. Our chance of an encounter went up when I lit the fire. And we're going to eat a meal. Um, we're going to eat these turnips because they disappear faster. Or sooner. Keeps for 11 days. Alright, we were interrupted. We got some, like, stone crab thingies. He had like a turtle shell. Is that it? Just one little crab. Cool. Back at full health. Oh my god. Look at that one. If 
you lose too much health, I think it might be where this line is. Um, you get the wounded status, which is really annoying. Um, and it could be like really detrimental. That's why I wanted to make sure I was at full health before potentially getting to more combat. All right, so I need to drop something again. It's a, it's a little annoying. It feels a bit like a bug or at least like a poor decision that I can't. Okay, this is not enough space. So this one actually probably makes sense. So I need to drop more. Wait, healing brew gained? Why did I not have space? Something is weird about the check that it, the inventory check it makes there. Uh, healing brew is excellent. I think healing from potions and not food um, always seemed quite rare. We actually got some really good loot here. I'm impressed. Um, I probably won't rest to full health. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's what happened before. That was because I walked through them? Yeah. That's cool. It's little things like that that I love about this world. It, it feels so immersive. Alright, well, I think we're going to call this video here. Uh, we just got into the exploration, which is like my favorite part of the game, but I didn't want to neglect um, giving you guys a proper introdu introduction, um, showing the character creation, and exploring the starting town for a bit. Um, so next session, we are definitely going to explore this map. Um, I'll check that out. It shows me the, the path I've taken. That's great. Um, that's something newer for me as well. I wonder how that develops. That was always kind of like a, a problem. But sometimes it was hard to retrace your steps. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I don't know... I think ultimately we want to get up to this temple. And we have this like map quest up... Uh, treasure map quest up here. But that's pretty far away. So I don't know if we want to try and like explore this starting area a bit. We have this quest and this quest and this quest. We should probably do those things, hang out here a bit, and then work our way up here. It's probably my goal, but who knows? Um, you kind of... It, this game becomes very freeform, even though there's a, there's a specific goal, and you can like mainline the main quest and probably finish the game like without too much like time investment. But also, like, one of the great joys of this game is really exploring and seeing what's around. Like, this little hut had those cool skeleton things, and um, we got some, like, nice loot from there. Um, stuff like that is, like, really cool. So, definitely excited to see what else we see as we explore here. And, yeah, I think we'll explore more of this region on the next episode. At some point, when we return to Haven, I'll, we'll do some more of the, the lore dump there, but I think I'll pace that out. And I didn't want to just like read to you guys for a, for a whole episode here, for a whole session, and then probably work our way up to this temple. And then what are these guys? Um, neutral relation, you know, maybe we can change that. We'll see. So yeah, this is awesome. So thanks again for watching guys. It's been so much fun. Um, again, this let's play series that we're starting with this uh unexplored 2 here was voted on by uh, supporters at my patreon if you want to support as well um, there are still some more votes up on there um, and other fun perks um and it just helps to uh, make what i'm doing here more sustainable help support the channel and me and the other things that i do here um, if you want to check that out that's at patreon.com tonehack i'd appreciate that um, and thanks again for watching excited for the next session and i'll see you guys there